untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at the Creativity Combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, built around Indomitable Creativity, the mythic rare sorcery for X and triple red that destroys X target artifacts and or creatures, and then for each permanent destroyed this way, its controller reveals cards from the top of their library until an artifact or creature card is revealed, those cards get exiled, and then the exiled cards are put straight onto the battlefield. So the goal of our deck is to target our own permanence with creativity, and then the only artifact or creature in the deck that we're guaranteed to find are the two copies of Saros Emissary, the 7-7 Angel with Flying, as it enters the battlefield makes us choose a card type, and we're usually going to name Creature with the first Emissary, and then we and creatures we control have protection from the chosen card type. So if we name creature, all of a sudden we can no longer take damage from opposing creatures, which is usually going to be game over for a lot of creature decks in the format that cannot remove our emissary. So that's our primary game plan. Of course you could replace Saros Emissary with a different artifact or creature, but I found Emissary to be the most consistently powerful option. If you want to get creative, you could potentially wait until you can cast Creativity for X equals 2, and then you can set up the Locust God plus Sage of the Falls combo, which lets you win the game on the spot as opposed to Emissary needing to untap a few times to actually close out the game, so it does have its advantages. But at least Creativity for X equals 1 is a lot more consistent at just finding a single Emissary naming creature and then going over some of the ways we have of generating creature tokens and artifacts. At one mana we've got Hard Evidence, which generates an O3 Blue Crab creature token and also lets us investigate, so we get to make a clue token that we can sacrifice for two mana to draw a card. So that gives us two targets for creativity, so we can potentially wait until we can cast creativity for X equals 2 and find both copies of our Saros Emissary if we didn't draw them in the meantime. But we can also just target our, usually the clue token over the crab token, as the crab token is more vulnerable to opposing spot removal. So if we try and target our crab with creativity, the opponent kills it in response, then the creativity won't be able to find our emissary, which is why targeting artifact tokens is usually safer. So that's where the clue token comes in handy, as well as the treasure token from Prismari Command. The 3 mana instant lets us choose two modes, between dealing 2 damage to any target, drawing 2 and discarding 2, creating a treasure token or destroying an artifact. So by making a treasure token we have another target for creativity, and draw 2 discard 2 also useful for helping us find the missing combo pieces. And then we also have the full playset of Magma Opus as another way to make a treasure token. Can just use the activated ability for 2 mana, discard it, and create a treasure token, which will set up our creativity. But it also sets up the second part of our combo, which is Mystic's Mastery. If we discard Magma Opus on turn 2, we make a treasure, then on turn 3 we can already cast Mystic's Mastery, exiling the Magma Opus from our graveyard, and then we can cast it without paying its mana cost essentially. So turn 3, Magma Opus is quite powerful, we get to deal 4 damage divided as we choose among any number of targets, tap 2 permanents, create a 4-4 token and draw 2 cards, so that's going to be pretty difficult for a lot of decks to recover from. And then we're still digging for the creativity combo at the same time, so we have both angles available. And then going over the rest of our deck, we do have a little bit of interaction. Full playset of Spikefield Hazard, which can deal 1 damage to any target, so it can take out an early Lenor Elves for instance, but can also be played as a tap land. And we do of course need a lot of a red mana to pull off the triple red on creativity, so that's why we won't see a lot of islands in the deck. Then at 2 mana we have the full playset of Fire Prophecy, deals 3 damage to target creature, and then we may put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library and if we do draw a card. So that's a great way to put an emissary from our hand back into our library. Could also play Valakut Awakening to have the same effect, although it's a little bit slow at 3 mana, but might be even more important if you're running the Locust God combo instead, as in that case you don't really want to have any of those in your hand, whereas at least you can draw one emissary and still find the second copy with the creativity for X equals 1. Then we also have two copies of Arcane Infusion as one of the flex slots, could easily be something else, but I found it to be pretty good, as an instant that lets us take a look at the top four cards of our library, can reveal an instant or sorcery from among them and put it into our hand, and then we can even flash it back out of the graveyard for five mana. So a nice grindy card, can provide a bit of card advantage, and helps us find the missing combo pieces, can even find a land if we find a spike field hazard, so it has that additional utility as well. And then we've got the full playset of Expressive Iteration, of course, in a blue-red deck. 
can usually cast it on turn 3 before playing our land for the turn, can look at the top 3 cards of our library, put one of them into our hand, one of them on the bottom of our library, and the third one gets exiled, and we can play the exiled card this turn, which also includes lands. Then we've got two copies of Anger of the Gods as our sweeper of choice, playing this over Sweltering Suns because the additional utility of exiling comes in handy, and between Prismari Command making us discard two, and Fire Prophecy we've got a lot of ways to get rid of a sweeper if it's not a great matchup for it. And then of course we've got our full playset of Mastery, four copies of Creativity, and then two copies of Saras Emissary. In a pinch you can even target opposing permanents with Creativity, but usually want to stick to targeting our own stuff. Then the mana base, pretty straightforward, lots of dual lands with Steam Vents, Spire Bluff, the Pathway, then lots of mountains to go with Creativity and one basic island. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands, not amazing. Do not have any way of creating an artifact for Creativity, and don't have Opus to go with Mastery. Do have Prophecy to maybe get rid of one Creativity. And then probably need to find blue mana as well. I think the fact that we're missing blue makes me want to mulligan. Alright, so this one's fine. And then definitely want to keep three lands plus opus. And then it's between command and second opus. I guess we'll bottom one magma opus here. And then we can maybe creativity on turn four. Champion, I could also kill with Hazard, especially now that we drew Mountain. But I'll wait, chances of a pump spell are pretty low, and maybe that changes our decision. But if they have a second Fervent Champion, we'll definitely take it out, and Steamkin looks like a better target than Fervent Champion here. Alright, Mystic's Mastery is awesome, so now we have turn 2 Opus, turn 3 Mastery. Which is going to be a nice way to buy time against Red. And then once we get Emissary in play, we should be in good shape. Although the opponent could technically still have a Stomp to uh, prevent all damage prevention effects, which will also make it so the opponent can still deal damage through the Emissary. But uh, yeah, opponent with double burning train to another fervent champion. Not a bad turn three, but we'll go for mastery right now. And then take out two champions and a burning tree. And there's our blue mana for commands, which also sets up creativity, or we could even creativity the elemental token, which is also an option. Shame Warlord's fine. So, I don't think I creativity my elemental. I could play it slow, and then just play tapped steam vents, keep up fire prophecy, so I don't take any unnecessary damage. Although... I think we're in decent shape no matter what here. Opponent moves to combats. So I guess the concern here is an Ember Cleave. So I'll block the Emissary and then if they cleave the Chain Whirler I can respond with Prophecy. And if they cleave the Emissary I guess I'll Prophecy the Emissary. And get rid of a land here. I was hoping they would cleave the Chain Whirler, otherwise blocking Chain Whirler could have played out a little bit better, but would have been worse in the face of a burn spell. Alright, so now I can command. Command can also destroy the Amber Cleave for what it's worth. And then next turn I'll go for creativity, not really in a hurry. So if her opponent just equips Amber Cleave and attacks, I can block, destroy Amber Cleave, make a treasure. So destroy artifacts, make a treasure.
And our opponent explodes before we even have to show them the creativity. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and missing creativity or Mizzix Mastery. So our hand doesn't really do much, but we do have both Prophecy and Command to go digging. And plenty of interaction between Prophecy and maybe even an Anger of the Gods. So I think I'll try it. And then turn two, if we don't need to Prophecy, I'll just make a treasure token. Opponent also blue red, so maybe a Phoenix deck, although no turn one play. So pass it back. Spry Dragon, find target for removal. Question is, do I want to use Prophecy? I think I might just use Prismari Command instead. Take the one and then main phase Prismari Command to play around any instance from the opponents. And then we'll deal two damage and draw two and discard two. Alright, so iteration's great. Do I need another Prismari command? Probably not. I kind of like Anger in the case of Arclight Phoenix as a way to exile it. But our opponent doesn't seem close to getting one back. So I can probably get rid of the second Magma Opus safely. And then it's a close call here. I think I'll get rid of maybe Prismari Command since we have Iteration to dig towards our missing combo pieces. And then I can play that before playing my lane next turn. Still maybe Prophecy as well. All right, we see looting. So if they discard Arclight Phoenix, Anger of the Gods is a great answer. And there we see an Arclight Phoenix discarded. Do they have two more spells to get it back? They don't. Alright, in that case we'll iterate and find Infusion in hand. And then I'll just play the pathway here. And I guess we'll need to play this as a blue source if I want to cast Infusion. Alright, so Infusion lets us play a longer game quite comfortably. If we find Mastery or if we find Creativity, we're in good shape. Opponent's gonna try and get back Phoenix this turn, but we're still at a healthy 19. So even if they get back multiple copies, we can take a hit and then exile them all. Hazard can also help us exile it, but... That's gonna be a Dragon Rage Channeler, so... Anger of the Gods is looking good. Take three. And find a Fire Prophecy. Another Anger is Insurance. So let's just exile everything. And probably play this tapped. Alright. Can flashback infusion and hopefully find something impactful. Even just another expressive iteration would be fine. Do I want to main phase it for some reason? Probably no need. We'll just pass. I guess I could find the uh, one mana sorcery to make a crab and a clue. But might want to kill some creatures at instant speed. Another flashback looting. And there's the hard evidence, probably better than a third prophecy. Alright, so if I find creativity I can cast it for x equals 2. I could keep some number of lands in hand to discard to prophecy or in case I find another prismari command, probably don't need more mana. 
And then I could crack the clue, although I might want both artifacts to target with creativity if we find it. Whereas the crab can easily be removed by the opponent here. I'm sure they'll have a couple removal spells in hand. So, pretty grindy game. Surprised we haven't found a single mastery or creativity yet. But we're also not in danger of dying anytime soon with a lot of removal left in hand. So if our opponent taps out, I'll maybe crack the clue because then I can target the crab and the treasure token. We're also at a point where I can just hard cast Magma Opus if I draw it. So yeah, don't hate my spot. Maybe could have played a tapped Spikefield Hazard out. Now that the opponent has Delirium and we can no longer kill Chandler. It's going to be a finale getting back to one mana spells. And if we do creativity for x equals 2, we'll name creature and instance. Although, Spellbomb actually would have been a way to interact with Emissary. So that's an important one to keep in mind. And once they bounce Emissary, don't really have an easy way to replay it. Can just put it back in my deck with Prophecy to then find once again with Creativity. And Holy Heat discarded. Still nothing from our opponent, but they're tapped out, so I'll crack my clue. In the hopes of finding some action. All right, there we go, creativity, so x equals 2, seems good here. And we'll go for creature and instance. And I'll keep up fire prophecy, sure. And our opponent packs it in, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. This hand's not particularly exciting, missing blue mana. Take a mulligan, this is better. So cards I want to keep. Definitely want to keep Expressive Iteration. Um, it's between Prophecy or Command, I think, to put on the bottom. Command digs a little bit deeper to find either Mastery or Creativity, but we already have Iteration to dig and Prophecy can always discard. And if I'm up against a Spirit Dancer deck, I'm going to need that turn to interaction. So let's bottom command. So turn to either Prophecy, Creature, or Discard Magma Opus. Right, turn one Thoughtseize probably takes Iteration. Nope, oh, takes Prophecy, so they might have an Arcanist they want to have stick around. And yep, yeah, there it is. So that's going to flashback Thoughtseize. So if I cast Iteration, they can just discard whatever card I found off of it. So I'm probably better off uh, discarding Magma Opus, making a treasure here, and then sadly lose Iteration, which I'm not too happy about. The good news is our opponent's not going to kill me incredibly quickly, so I have time to top deck some more good cards. As their opponent has their own iteration. So disruption heavy deck can be a tough matchup. Make a treasure. Another magma opus not looking great. Can try and hold it until I can cast it for 8 mana, although that's going to be a while. Another Arcanist. Into Soul Guide Lantern, so that can exile my Magma Opus. And then it's essentially free to exile everything else, so... Yeah, the Magma Opus plan's not going to be all that amazing here. But we can maybe still get there with the creativity plan. 
consider Mill's Inquisition, which they can flash back, but we can let that resolve. So the question is, do I still discard Magma Opus? I don't think I do, since even if I top deck Creativity, I wouldn't be able to cast it for two if I discard Opus here. So I might as well wait. Right, Prophecy is not bad. Can kill one of the Arcanists. And then probably just pass and wait it out. They might decide to sacrifice Soul Guide Lantern. At which point we can still discard Opus afterwards. Delver, okay. Opponent puts Lurus in hand, and then if they were to attack, they only have one Consider to flash back, so I guess we'll let them attack. And then do I still want to kill Arcanist, or do I wait to maybe kill Lurus? I guess I'll still go for it, just to be able to discard the land here. Alright, there's Creativity. So now I'm liking Opus, and then if I draw land, I can Creativity for two. Which can then name, let's say, Creature and Instant, or maybe Instant and Sorcery. Alright, sadly, if this one comes into play tapped. So I can only Creativity for one. But I think I still have to go for it, and then... Probably name creature, hoping the opponent doesn't have removal to kill my emissary. Also, they could easily have a Blood Chief's Thirst and then probably hang on to my land in case I find like a Prismari command and want to discard it. So Emissary can close out the game in two attacks. Opponent's gonna go digging. Opponent also potentially playing Croxa, which is a reason to play the Spire Bluff. Although if they're playing Delver of Secrets, it's possible they don't have room for Croxa as they need enough instants and sorceries. Another Delver. And Unholy Heat dealing 6 is gonna be enough with Arcanist flashing it back. Alright, so we're still in trouble here. Magma Opus doesn't do me much good. So now Double Delver transforming would apply a lot of pressure. Still 1-1s. One and they do have Crocs after all. So I can discard it to make an extra treasure or save myself 3 damage. I guess I'll save myself 3 damage since a second treasure is not all that helpful. Unless maybe I want to hard cast Magma Opus. So it's looking dire. Lantern shuts off any Mystic's Mastery top decks and uh, only have one Angel left. And at this point we're pretty far behind. If I named Instant to save the Angel from removal, then the creatures would likely kill me. If I named Creature, another Unholy Heat would kill the Angel. So between a rock and a hard place. I can hazard one of the opponent's creatures but still be dead on board. So that's going to be game. If the Spire Bluff was a different land that came into play untapped, I might have been able to 
creativity for two, and then one on instance and one on creature likely would have been able to survive. Unless my opponent had like a Blood Chief's Thirst as removal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand, I would say, with Arcane Infusion helping me dig towards either creativity or maybe the Opus Mastery combo. But given that we don't have Opus or Mastery, probably want to look for creativity instead. Let's see what we're up against. Mountain. Alright, there's Mastery, so now finding Magma Opus with Infusion would be nice too. Snoops up against Goblins. For opponents, Mono Red Goblins, Emissary on creatures enough to win the game. So, probably just going to pass, put a stop on the opponent's draw step here. Alright, Prospector on top. I guess I could double hazard Snoop, or I can just wait an extra Anger of the Gods. Yeah, I'll let them play the Prospector if they want. Could also just hazard the Prospector, then of the Bugbear on top. So, no third land, it seems. Yeah, maybe... I don't need to Anger of the Gods quite yet, and I can save it to sweep up a 3-mana Lord. And then for now just deal with the Prospector so they can't ramp out anything crazy. Alright, and then probably going to be flashing back Infusion next turn. Don't know if I need to hold on to the Author Hazard, but then again I guess I've five lands already, so probably no need to play it tapped. So this turn we're kind of just sitting here. Opponent has a Matron coming up. Another Infusion, so I could main phase Infusion or flash it back. Flashing back's more mana efficient. I'm fine with my opponent casting Matron next turn. I guess we'll flash it back here. Prospector on top is scary. Do I need to intervene with hazards? Don't think so. We know our opponents does not have another untapped land in hand, so they won't be able to play Muxus, which is the main concern. And then I'll flash back in Fusion. Finding Magma Opus, so that sets up my Mastery combo. And I guess I could do that now. Kill the opponent's board, make a 4-4 and keep digging towards creativity. Iteration should help us dig, still have another infusion. So it's not going to be too long before we find creativity. And creativity for one on creatures already enough, I think, given that my opponent's mono red. There's a chieftain, but that's why we saved Anger of the Gods. Alright, so where do we start? Maybe with Iteration? Just a bunch of lands, so... Play Island. Then I can still Infusion. Finding Prismari commands can help me dig as well. And we'll kill the Chieftain. Draw to discard two. Double iteration's nice, so... Probably getting rid of, let's say, Hazard and Evidence. Or I can maybe ditch a land since we have double iteration. Sure, we'll keep the Hard Evidence. 
hit for four. And then between both copies of Iteration and a flashback to Infusion, should be able to find that creativity. If we make enough treasures, we could technically hard cast Sarah's Emissary as well. Another Magma Opus, which I'm also close to just hard casting. I guess I could technically do it if I sack my treasure. Opponent has a Prospector in hand, so next turn they could maybe cast Muxus, which could technically kill us. So we have to be a little bit careful, but I think I start by digging with Iteration in case we find creativity to just end it right now. Alright, so command in hand, play mountain, and then we'll iterate again, finding more iterations. So I guess I'll put iteration in hand and cast a prismari command right now, and if that kills a creature, there are fewer creatures to sack to the prospector to make mana. So let's see, can command, deal 2, draw to discard 2, kill matron, and we will keep looting. Alright, there's creativity at long last, can still keep up fire prophecy to cast at instant speed, and probably don't need command anymore. Alright, so just need to survive this next turn. And with an instant speed fire prophecy available, that should be doable. Uh, just gonna be a Krenko without haste. That's fine. Alrighty, so creativity for x equals 2. Might as well. And then one name's creature, the author maybe go for instance on the off chance that they have some removal. And now my creatures are unblockable as well. And our opponent concedes. Alright, so it took a while to find the combo pieces, but our control game plan in the meantime kept us alive. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? Do you have creativity? No way of making an artifact or a creature. But I do have Prophecy, can also bottom one of the Angers to keep digging, so I'll try it. I've got about 12 uh, cards we could draw to make a treasure. Turn on Forest, but no Lenor Elves, so I'll probably just play a Tapped Hazard. And then I can turn to Prophecy. Could be a matchup where Anger of the Gods is effective. Yeah, we'll keep up Fire Prophecy here. So, there's Archrit. Opponent must have kept a pretty slow hand. I'll Prophecy now. Probably still tempted to hang on to both Angers. So, can bottom a Steam Vents. Right, Prismari Command's a good one. So that enables creativity, and then creativity finding Angel on the creature should be enough to win the game. Opponent probably has Collected Company. Nope. Clan caller instead. And elite. I mean, this doesn't really matter. They can have their tokens. But I could have killed Clan caller in response. So we will make a treasure and then draw to discard too, but. And then. Don't really need these. Would be very surprised if our opponent could beat creativity in the spots. Name creature. And then next turn I could always swipe the board if necessary. But it shouldn't be necessary. Emissary, just gonna kill the opponent in three attacks and... If they can't remove it, it doesn't really matter how much power and toughness they have in play. Frailies. 
can draw a lot of cards with a regal force eventually, but... Skyshroud is home to many of my kin. Opponent's about to find out how the emissary works. And I'm just gonna ignore Freilis here, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. At first glance, this hand looks pretty terrible, but it is a two-lander with prophecy to get rid of emissary. The only problem is I still need to draw a couple lands, but have Magma Opus to set up creativity. So it's really not that bad. Just gotta hope the opponent presents the target for prophecy. I'll try it. And an all-creature deck should have plenty of targets. Now I could hazard the elves on turn one, but I think I'm gonna need this as a land, unfortunately. And then prophecy turn two, putting emissary on the bottom. And then creativity finding emissary should be game over against an ancient ziggurat deck. Uh, we'll kill Grumguli, which is probably part of some combo. Hope to draw land. Alright, and there we see the other part of the combo, which is the Brute Moth. Alright, so... I can Magma Opus here, and then... That's probably it. Could technically also cast Iteration, but... Probably save that for next turn. In case I don't draw land. I'll lead the Stampede to Ghost Digging. So yeah, with Grumguli, Luminous Broodmoth, some sort of sacrifice outlet, the opponent could set up an infinite combo. Which I guess if it's a combo that somehow drains my life total, it could get around Emissary. So we might not be out of the woods yet. Alright, Hazard comes into play tapped. I could... Cast the iteration, sacking my treasure here, hoping to find a blue source so I can also cast hard evidence. But I could just play a tapped hazard and then next turn creativity for one. And then hope that emissary on creature is enough. But um uh, Yeah, that's not necessarily true for opponent has like a cruel celebrant that drains me whenever a creature dies. Then some sort of Mothra infinite combo would still get there. So maybe I should be digging for additional interaction with creativity and just find that blue mana. Hazard could also still exile a creature, so that maybe gets around the infinite combo. So I might want to keep that in hand. So let's cast Iteration and really hope for blue mana, which we found. So in hand goes Command. And then we'll play the blue source right now. And then I can play Hard Evidence and still keep up Spikefield Hazard. Which can maybe still disrupt the opponent's combo by exiling creature that's about to die. As opposed to killing the Lenor Elves. Aha, uh -huh, Solemnity. So that's the other part of the combo as well. To combo with Mothra and then they still need some sort of sack outlet, I guess. Putrid Goblin, sure. So now if I try and kill a creature, it would come back with a flying counter from Mothra, but because of Solemnity, that counter doesn't apply, so they can just keep sacking their creature essentially. Alright, so I'll take it. Fire Prophecy. So I can kill Mothra at instant speed. Do I want to do that now or do I wait? I guess I could wait. And then my turn is kind of just do nothing. Because if I think if I go for creativity here, 
it's not necessarily going to be good enough, as my opponent could just drain me to death, ignoring the protection from creatures. So, I think I pass. And then we'll see here another putrid goblin, sure. The crab's doing a good job on defense. And then now I'll probably try and kill Mothra. Putting a creativity on the bottom. So that gets exiled, and I'm a little bit less concerned about getting comboed off. So, yeah, I could go for creativity for one, get a single angel on creature, start applying pressure, or I could try and wait until I can do it for x equals two. And then Prismari Command could kill a mana creature, make a treasure, or draw to discard two. Got a couple of options. I guess I can still do this at instant speed since most of my lands come into play untapped. In case I need to interact with a certain creature. Alright, back up Mothra. Okay. So... What does that do for me? I guess I let that resolve and then... Hope there's no second combo piece. So probably want to go digging and make a treasure to give me more mana. Alright, discard one infusion and a tapped spire bluff. Ooh, anger of the gods. That should be pretty effective too here, as that gets around Mothra's ability. So... I could Anger plus Prismari Command to finish off Mothra if I sack my treasure, which is probably worth it. And then I can wait a little bit longer on going for the creativity. So, let's go for it. And then deal two, and probably make another treasure so I can go for a creativity for two next turn. Alright, so seeing that uh, Exile ability on Anger of the Gods is quite useful earlier against the Arclight Phoenix, but now also against Mothra combo. So it's finally time to combo off. And then one on Creature, and one on... don't think it matters too much, but maybe go for like Sorcery. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Missing blue mana, but we do have double magma opus to potentially fix as well. And then iteration and infusion can dig pretty deep for either Mizzix's mastery or creativity, so I'll give it a shot. Let's see what we're up against. Mountain Channeler, so there we go, Creativity, so with my two copies of Magma Opus I can Creativity maybe turn four, even if I don't draw more lands. Another Channeler. I'll take a Mizzix Mastery as well, Triple Channeler. Anger of the Gods would also be juicy, so it looks like a monorat kind of madness aggro deck. Okay. And there's Mizzix Mastery. Well, this is going to be a blowout. One, two, three, four. And tap two lands. And 
all right. Well, how much was that? Like a, a six for one, seven for one? Hard to keep track. Can also target my elemental with creativity if I draw an untapped land. Another magma opus so we can set up another mastery turn here potentially. Sure, that seems fine. Just play this tapped and then discard another magma opus. Probably no need to attack for four. Don't want to give the opponents any extra cards with courier. It's gonna burn my face for two. So, Emissary, we kind of want to have both one on Creature and one on Instant, just to be absolutely safe, but with two cards in hand, one on Creature is probably enough to survive here. We'll block. Opponent had double Ox in hand, so they wanted to get rid of those. Also found a Rootwalla, which they can play for free with Madness. That's fine. So, could go for another Magma Opus with Mastery, or I could Creativity here. I guess I can Creativity for two now. So I'll attack first. And then... I can get one on Creature and one on Instance, and that's probably game over. Instance and Creature. So our opponent can burn us out, they can't attack us with creatures, and they can't remove emissaries using instant speed removal, so... They'll need a pretty special combination of cards to get out of this. Fiery Temper can't deal any damage to me here. And then our opponent explodes. Yeah, given that everything I controlled had protection, if they actually cast the Fiery Temper, they would have been forced to target their own creature or themselves. And then next turn we could just attack, maybe cast another Mizzix Mastery on uh, Magma Opus to deal for damage and finish them off. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. No blue mana means I probably have to mulligan. This is a little bit better. Bottom one creativity. Still need to find a way to make a token here somehow. Facing a Yurion deck, but it doesn't appear to be a controlling deck. So hopefully they present a target for Fire Prophecy. Right, infusion's nice. I guess I'll main phase it in case I find a hard evidence. Magma Opus will do. So I can combine that with Mizzix Mastery. So for points, a creature deck with the Orion, I like my chances a lot better as opposed to if we're facing a control deck with counter spells and the Wrath of God. And that's definitely the main weakness of our deck is sweepers like Wrath of God that can ignore the protection on our Saros Emissary. So I'll just pass and then I can maybe discard Magma Opus end of turn. Could also keep my tokens around to combo with creativity instead. So I'm still not sure what's going on on the opponent's side of the battlefield. Do I Prismari Command or do I just discard Magma Opus and go for Mizzix Mastery? I guess that's fine. And then I don't need to get rid of my treasure token yet. Ah, let's try this. Opponent cycles Triome, sure. Alright, so we got a 4-4 in play. 
And next turn I could potentially creativity for x equals 2. One probably naming creature, the other I'm not sure. Instant is always a safe guess. Sometimes Planeswalker to prevent uh, Teferi minusing on one of our angels. But uh, yeah, still don't quite know what our opponent's trying to do. Aha, uh -huh, Journey to the Oracle instead, so opponent's about to put a lot of lands in play. Alright, down to two cards in hand. And they return Jotzi. Bojuka Bok exiles my graveyard, so luckily managed to master the Magma Opus already. Still lost our infusion. And a treasure hunt. Alright, so now it's starting to make sense. So they found a lot of lands with treasure hunts, which they can all put in play with Journey to the Oracle. And then what's their eventual win condition? I guess creature lands are part of it. But they don't seem to have a lot of interaction, like a blast zone is going to be too slow to kill my Saros Emissaries. So I think if I just creativity for two, we should be fine. And I guess her opponent still has to discard to hand size two here. So they don't get to keep all those lands, as they don't have a Reliquary Tower in play. Just plays out Lair of the Hydra. And we'll see what they decide to hang on to. Opponent actually timed out and had to discard automatically. So we'll hit for four. And then... We'll get our Angels. And then one on creature. Don't think there's a reason to name lands. So maybe go for like. It's not like my opponent's playing the Zenith Flare version of Treasure Hunt, otherwise I could name Instant. Yeah, I guess like creature and instant is probably still a safe bet. Alright. So I've got 14 damage coming in next turn. I guess naming a land can protect against uh, 2 damage from Frostpire, but still gonna be a little bit short of killing the Angel. So don't really see a way out for them. Unless I'm missing something obvious. Journey put a bunch of lines in play. And that's probably game over. Alright, and our opponent explodes. Sweet. So yeah, we got to see our Creative Crabs deck do its thing a few times. Got some lucky turn 3 Mizzix Mastery into Magma Opus, which that's why we're playing that combo, just because of that explosive potential early on, in case we can combo with Creativity. But uh, like I said in this last game, we do definitely have some bad matchups in the format, like a traditional control deck with counter spells and sweepers. It's going to be pretty hard to beat, so might be a reason to include a bunch of creature lands in the mana base, but probably still losing those games regardless. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.